Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Metropolitan Room's managing partner, Mr. Bernie Fershpan. Thank you. This is not my night, but thank you so much. Wow. It's hot, isn't it? But who cares? We're having a good time, right? Wow. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming here to a very, very special night. This Is Your Night is a series that we do every month, and this is our third year, and we've had so, so many wonderful people that we've honored and paid tribute to, and they've all become really special friends, and I'd like to applaud them one more time, all of those that we've honored, and it's about two, at least two dozen, if not 30, some really great people. Anyway, I want to welcome everybody to the Metropolitan Room, the world capital of cabaret. Thank you. It says here, wait for applause. <laughs> this Is Your Night is based on a classic premise. You've heard of something like this before, haven't you? in which we um, profile a guest honoree who has contributed in some significant way to the entertainment scene and beyond. They are the behind the scenes maestros, teachers, producers, photographers, promoters, writers, all the people in the entertainment business that give a push to those that are on the stage. Without them, the artists we love and admire wouldn't have an opportunity, a stage, or have learned how to perfect their craft. These unsung heroes of great talent get their long-awaited due right here at the Metropolitan Room. The selection process is made by recommendations from leaders and authorities in the industry. The tribute features a lineup of entertainment Professionals, family, and friends who will share their stories, their love through song and comedy about their experiences with the honoree. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we're saluting an individual with one of the most impressive records of contribution to society and the entertainment industry, as well as a steadfast supporter of the arts. This is your night. Mr. Joe Cirola. You know, in that picture, I got to say, you look like the wizard. <laughs> Mr. Joe Cirola is a true Renaissance man. I know a couple, just a handful of Renaissance people. But when I learned more and more about Joe, I realized he is the true definition of what Renaissance is. A man of many talents who, has, who was able to pursue all of them and successfully, not even half ass. <laughs> you use both asses. <laughs> you know his face, a face full of character. And you've seen him on television, screen, and stage. Joe Sirola has been one of the most sought-after actors in the business. Mr. Sirola is not a household name. However, he's a household voice. <laughs> Johnny Carson once said that Joe Sirola is the most listened-to voice in America. Johnny Carson is dead. You're not. And you still have the voice. You certainly recognize the voice, rich, deep, resonant, distinctive, and in such demand that he is called the king of voiceovers. Give him a hand, ladies and gentlemen. The king of voiceovers is right here at the Metropolitan Room. A man of 10,000 voices. Right? Okay, so there's your Renaissance man. That's Joe right up there, you see? Born and educated in New York, he received his Bachelor's 
associate degree or bachelor's of arts degree, I'm sorry, in business from Columbia University. Do you realize how smart this man is? And he became an executive with Kimberly Carp, uh, Kimberly Clark Corporation. Right away, he got an executive job. He graduates Columbia, gets an executive job. Right away. But in spite of what would be considered an ideal situation for most of us. For a young businessman, he found himself disconnected with his career choice. From the time he was a youngster, he had been hooked on theater and film. Joe always felt that he can do it. And he eventually realized that's what he wanted to do. To the horror of his friends and family, he quit the world of business cold. And it was goodbye to the handsome office, the exceptional salary with a lavish expense account, and a secretary. <laughs> At age 28, he became an actor with a debut on Off-Broadway for the magnificent sum of $15 a week on unemployment. And he couldn't be happier. He was off and running in a new career. But there's something about Joe. He knew he was going to succeed. That's what makes him a renaissance man. Whatever it is that he pursued, he knew he was going to rise to the top. That's what I learned about Joe. He began a television career with starring role in the 1958 award-winning CBS production of Dostoevsky's Notes from the Underground, and then The Brighter Day. Since then, he's appeared in over 600 TV shows. I haven't been on one. <laughs> and then came Broadway, and then came Broadway, and co-starring role in a Steve Lawrence, Edie Gourmet hit. Right away, right off the top, he's with Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet, right off the top. The Golden Rainbow and the Broadway smash, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, right off the top. <laughs> Richard Burton's drinking buddy was Joe Cirola. Right off the top, right to the top. He wants a drinking buddy, it's Richard Burton. <laughs> they quickly became very good friends, right? Very good friends. And there have been many Hollywood movies. So it's off-Broadway, it's television, it's Broadway. Now it's Hollywood, right to the top, right to the top. Co-stars in character roles with Rock Hudson and Gina Lola Brigida in Strange Bedfellows. And then with Clint Eastwood, right off, right off the top, right off the bat, Clint Eastwood and Hang Him High, great character. In The Greatest Story Ever Told, in Super Cops, in Hail to the Chief, and more recently, Love is a Gun. As a performer, he refused, he had that much confidence in himself, he refused to be pigeonholed. His characters changed as often as his roles, now a menacing villain, then a joyous comic, a warm and lovable character, even a song and dance man. Nor did he hesitate to change his face and voice when the role called for it. A friend suggested doing voiceovers. And because of his impressive and compelling voice, he immediately, beca immediately became the go-to guy. Over 10,000 voiceovers later, he is the undisputed king of voiceovers for top nationally recognized products and has won some 25 Clio Awards, which are the International TV Commercials Awards, including brands like Wendy's, bless you, <laughs> that's not a brand. Boar's Head, Mobile, GE, NyQuil, VIX, Formula 44, Club Med, Hertz, Ford, and hundreds more. Recently, you have seen him on the web as a Volkswagen spokesperson in the webisode series as Sluggy Patterson. I watched it. It was hilarious. Really well done. And just a couple of years ago that he did it, and he did it so well. And then back to TV. And then back to the stage in Pal Joey and My Fair Lady. And then back to TV with appearances in popular shows as the Montefuscos. 
The Magician, along with guest star spots in such popular shows as Quincy, Matt Houston, Mission Impossible, Visions, Rhoda, Hawaii Five-0, The Untouchables, Man from Uncle, my favorite show, Ilya Kuryakin, and Napoleon Solo. Get Smart, Rockford Files, Civil Wars. You know, it's just that you've seen him on TV, but you probably took for granted who he was. But he played a very important role on these programs, and one of which particularly proud of playing Tom Paine in Steve Allen's Meeting of the Minds. Did you know that Joe Sirola is one of the top Shakespearean actors in the world? Go ahead, you can, it's okay, you can applaud. It's okay, we can take a break, I can catch my breath, because it's not over yet. We're not leaving until I go through his entire resume. Joe has returned to Broadway, this time as a Tony Award-winning producer. Among his Broadway producing credits are the Tony-winning Best Musical, A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. <laughs> Love Letters, The Revival. The Trip to Bountiful. Ghetto Clown. Rodgers and Hammerstein, Cinderella. Stick Fly and Time Stands Still, as well as Cagney, the musical. You didn't know all this, right? You know, my head is spinning. When I had lunch with him, my head was spinning, going through all of this, and back, and back to the stage, back to TV, back to producing, back to writing. Back. And then as he's telling me all this, he's on the phone and texting and sending messages and posting on Facebook. <laughs> this is a true Renaissance man. Did you know that he's a gourmet chef? I'm not done yet. He's a songwriter. He's an amazing artist. He's a powerful athlete and a celebrity tennis professional. And he's an exceptional gardener. That's the definition of a Renaissance man. In his Fifth Avenue penthouse, a residence impressive enough to have been featured in town and country, and on ABC TV, there is, uh, there, there his particular pride is his rooftop garden, where he grows and cultivates many varieties of roses. Now you'll notice he's wearing a rose. He always wears a rose. It's called the Cirola Rose. But this area also provides the controlled climate for an assortment of tropical plants, herbs, peach, pear, lemon, and fig trees. He's so proud of it. Every time we come up there, you show me the same plants. I remember. <laughs> and you're just a proud because every time you show me, there's more fruits coming out of it. It's great. He's got grapevines. He's got peppers. He's got hundreds of annuals and perennials. Joe, I don't know, what can't you do? Did you know that? <laughs> he might tonight. He might have a cow. Uh, did you know that Joe, all right, you ready for this? All right, I know you, okay, how, how much of you have had enough of how much this guy can do? It's not over. He is an inventor of a dental stain remover. And, <laughs> and last but not least, Mr. Joe Sirola is a wonderful human being who is an incredible philanthropist. I don't know if you know this, he's a philanthropist. Although he does not publicize it, and I'm gonna make it public, I have to say it, I found this out through the FBI, <laughs> that you haven't publicized this, but many philanthropists, many philanthrop Philanthropies. There's one which has been announced by the recipient Copper Mountain College of the College of the Desert. Sirola owns a thousand acres on that property um, of the college in a suburb of Palm Springs, has made the largest single donation of $100,000 to the college for a technical wing and named it after his parents. What a good guy. What a good son. Anton and Anna Sirola. He named it after his parents. Who here knew that? Does he talk about it? Does he brag about it? No. He just loves his plants. 
He loves Claire. Everything is good. Isn't she terrific? We're going to have to do another night for you, Claire. For putting up with this renaissance man. All right. He has also arranged for American baseball organizations to donate boxes and boxes of gloves, uniforms, bats, catcher's equipment, etc. to the fledgling, fledgling baseball leagues of his native Croatia. I didn't even know he's Croatian. The great American pastime has given the men and women in the war-torn Balk Balkans uh, a haven to escape, to relax, to play ball. And he just gives it out of his heart. What a good guy. Thank you for being such a mensch. You really are. And most importantly, most importantly, folks, we can all agree. Next slide. Uh, we can all agree that he's truly an exceptional and genuine friend. That's, that's his one thing that I got to say stands out. Stands out. And he's brought to our lives Claire Gozo, who's a wonderful human being as well. Recent, recently, we've lost some very dear friends, and he's been such a good friend to all of them and been there for them. Uh, let's see, let's go to the next one. A couple of uh, photos of the past. This is uh, Joe over here. How old were you, Joe? Seven. Seven years old. And that's your sister over there on the left? My mother, my father, my sister, and me. Yeah. Wait a second, who's your mother? Uh, that one over there. Okay, so that's your sister. What's your sister's name? Vera. Vera. Is she still around with us? Yeah. Great. Where does she live? No, she's not around. Okay. And where, where did she live? Where did Vera live? New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay. Yay, New Jersey. Okay. Are they playing in the Olympics, New Jersey? Are they in the Olympics? Um, here's a letter from Richard Burton. I think that was your first contact with him. You bought him flowers, and he sent you a letter. It was, it was a love relationship that lasted for many years. Next slide we got here. Some photos of scenes from TV and screen. Yeah. How do you like that? You like that, Joe? Yeah, it's a nice. I'll give you the PowerPoint presentation after this event. Okay, and a few of his friends in the business. Sinatra, Don Adams, to name a few. Julie Andrews, Robert Vaughn, David McCollum, Robert Goulet. And then Sonny Bono was uh, one of your celebrity tennis partners, correct? Yeah. And then Joe, here's another one. Okay, I'm not done yet, folks. He's got one more thing that he does. He's an artist, and not just an artist, an incredibly good artist. Look at some of the artwork that he's done. And these are big paintings. If you go to his apartment, are they all invited to your next party? Yeah, everybody here is invited. I'm inviting everybody. you got to see these paintings. They're huge, and they're beautiful and colorful. Beautiful work. It's just incredible that Joe, whatever he puts his mind to, he gives it 100%. His whole heart goes into it. He believes in himself, and he believes in people. And I want to thank you so much for being such a wonderful human being. And you certainly deserve this evening. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. I'm going to be introducing some of his friends who are going to be entertaining all of us tonight. But before we do that, I'd like to play a quick video from a friend in California who obviously couldn't make it here today, but he wanted you to see this. Go ahead. I am Peter Marshall. I'm one of Joe Cibola's oldest but cutest friends. Uh, Joe, I'm sorry that Laurie and I can't be there tonight. Uh, I know you're being honored, and you should be. You're just a wonderful actor, singer, raconteur, and of course, you're king of the voiceovers. We love you. I love to Claire and, uh, and say, hey, say hello to Bernie and Joanne, and I'll see you soon. Hey, give, okay, give me a call. Tell me how it went. Bye-bye, guys. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the lovely and talented Shayna Farr. Okay. Gosh. 
gosh, Joe. <laughs> and he's still the busiest man I think I know. <laughs> he's always out and about doing, running around. Um, I first met Joe at, I think, the Dutch Treat Club. Yeah. But I got to know Joe at the Players. And, well, he's actually a member of the Holy Trinity to performers. That's the Players, the Lambs, and the Friars. Um, I know him through the Players, and we have a tradition there. Uh, every, fr every first Thursday of the month is Meet Your Fellow Players. And um, when I joined, I do get shy once in a while, and there were people standing around the piano, and I was just kind of hanging back and watching and listening, and, and he goes, you sing, right? You sing. Come up here. Come up here. So I gathered around the piano with him, and he does a great Alfred Doolittle. Um, and he, so he does the, the two songs from My Fair Lady, Get Me to the Church on Time, and A Little Bit of Luck. He even does the dance and everything with it. In fact, if I ever do a reading of that, if I get around to it, you'll be out for too little. Um, so it has actually become a tradition for us at the Players. He does his two songs, and uh, he goes, okay, kid, okay, kid, and then the piano goes, do, 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 and we start it. Bed, bed, I couldn't go to bed. My head's too light to try to set it down. Sleep, sleep, I couldn't sleep tonight. Not for all the jewels in the crown. I could have danced all night. I could have danced all night. And still have begged for more. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things I've never done before. I'll never know what made it so exciting while at once my heart took flight. I only know when he began to die. I could have danced, danced, danced all night. Now, if those of you want to join in and be the maids and the house staff and the beds, please, in your best English accent, I'm not doing an English accent, but if you want to, join in. I could have danced all night. I could have danced all night and still have been. I could have spread my wings and done a thousand things I've never done before. I'll never know what made it so exciting. Why all at once my heart took flight. I only know when he began to turn. I could have danced, danced, danced oh, oh. We love you, Joe. And little Austin. Joe, Joe, Joe. And that was Shane Hafar. And ladies and gentlemen, on the stage, still remaining, is Mr. John Weber, and he'll take it from here.
That was Mr. John Weber. And now we're going to play a commercial for you. John, you wanted to say a few things? The name of that song is Love Conquers All, written by Joe Cirola. Oh, yeah. And it's got words. Thanks. Okay, we'll be playing a commercial. Also note, besides Joe's voice in the background, customer number six. Said ham, you may be surprised. Boar's head has cheese. Pass it on. Oh, Boar's head has cheese. Mmm, pass it on. Boar's head has cheese. Mmm, pass it on. Bob's bed, he chops down trees. No, cheese. Exceptional cheese. American cheddar, Swiss provolone. No, Bob's dad made these. Boris is dead. But there is cheese. Boar's head has cheese. Pass it on. And that last customer is a very famous Russian comedian. Please give it up for Mr. Gregory Korostyshevsky. I came from Russia, from a very small town called Shit of Cow. <laughs> which is right next to Moss Cow. Here I live in New Jersey, Newark, very convenient place, and not too far from New York, only one day walk. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's hard to make it in America, you know. Especially for foreigner. My first job here in this country was uh, in the stock market. No. I mean, in the stock room of supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> T today, I have a career in education. I'm a high school custodial engineer. <laughs> good job, but not as good as supermarket. There is nothing to steal. <laughs> <laughs> My, my my wife wants me to. Did I tell you I'm married? <laughs> I'm married. <laughs> yeah. my, my wife wants me to become more American. Yeah. She says to me, Gregory, it's time already to wear American clothes. So I bought the shirt, very nice. And from this very popular designer, what's his name? Oh yeah, clearance. I'm married, but I'm not wearing a wedding ring. You see? No ring. 
because my wife doesn't let me. She's afraid I'm going to lose it. <laughs> I ask her, honey, do you trust me not to wear a wedding ring when I go out without you? She said, sure, as long as you're wearing this short. Clearance. Yeah. And now she bought me a cell phone, the smart one. But I'm not ready for this fancy stuff. In Russia, I never had any phone. Mm. Did not need it. Because everyone I ever knew lived with me. in the same room. <laughs> English, English is hard to learn. Does anybody speak English? <laughs> Little bit. Only me and you. It's OK. I, I, I was told that it helps to read newspaper every day. Yeah. S to learn English every day. So for the last five years, I've been reading New York Times every day. <laughs> the same one I bought five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so do you understand me OK? Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Because my wife complains I talk too fast. <laughs> I, I like English language a lot, but it's because for me it's very confusing. I just went to Dunkin' Donut coffee shop, and there was a man working there with a big turbine, big turbine like this. Yeah, turbine. I asked him, Mr. Can I? please have a cup of famous Dunkin' Donut coffee. He said, sure, how do you like it? I said, I like it a lot. <laughs> he said, you screwed up. <laughs> yeah. I have a habit, you know, of reading the signs in the store windows. No signs in the store windows. I've noticed that some of the signs are very suspicious. For example, just the other day I went, I passed by this new store with a huge sign. We've got your mattress. <laughs> to tell us the truth. I didn't believe it. <laughs> but just in case, went home to check. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I don't like parking meters. Do you know in my town, Nurk? I told you I live in Nurk. Yeah, I live in Nurk. I have to pay whole quarter for one hour of parking. Whole quarter. What if I don't need one hour? <laughs> what if I only need 10 minutes? Why should I, when I come back, waste my time sitting in the car <laughs> waiting for the stupid meter <laughs> to expire. <laughs> yeah. When I ask Americans, how are you doing? Simple question, how are you doing? They always say, great. 
excellent, very good. We Russians never say great. Because it's like asking for bad luck. We say so, so, not too good. You don't want to know. <laughs> I think if Tony the Tiger lived in Russia, he would sound like frosted flakes are mm, not so good. <laughs> yeah. What's really confusing to me, you know, in this country is choices. Choices. Take, for instance, supermarket, soap department. There is so many soaps here. How do I know what kind of soap to use for what? In Russia, there was only one kind of soap. It was called soap. <laughs> My wife used to cut it in half. This is for laundry and this is for bed. That's it. Here in America, you have hand soap, foot soap, liver 2000 soap. And you know, in America, people wash their liver with soap. In Russia, we wash our liver with vodka. <laughs> Represent. Should I go already? <laughs> there is a red light. I think it's a traffic light. Yeah. Yeah. B Bernie, do I have a minute or should I go? You have a one, a half a minute. Half a minute. <laughs> half a minute. What should I say? Yeah. I, 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 I went back to Sheet of Cow recently. Yeah. I visit my uncle Boris, Boris, my uncle, yeah, and, and, and we, we sit with him drinking, you know, talking, and all of a sudden I notice in his living room a big sledgehammer, big sledgehammer hanging on the wall in the living room. I ask him, Boris, what this hammer doing in the living room? He said, it's not hammer, it's a clock. What do you mean clock? Clock, watch this. He took the hammer, hit the wall, suddenly voice from the wall. Son of a bitch, it's two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> My name is Gregory from Shit of Cow with Love. Ladies and gentlemen, Gregory Karostyshevsky from Russia. And now, please help me welcome to the stage a very dear friend of ours, Mr. Eric Rudy. Hello. I'm very happy to be here this evening with all of you. At first, I thought I would just speak this evening, uh, but I've changed my mind a little bit. I'm still going to talk, but we'll get to that later. I have the very distinct and pleasurable honor to call Joe Sirola my friend. And I would like to add a couple of words to what Bernie said in his introduction. And those words are steadfast and loyal. Mr. Sirola means a great deal to me and he meant a great deal to my late husband, which is why I'm here tonight, because I would not have missed this for the world. 
neither would he. I've had the distinct pleasure of seeing the quiet, gentle, loving side of Mr. Sirola, which is quite a pleasure. He called us every day while we were in Europe, while we were in Grand Cayman, every day. And for that, I will always be grateful. Joe and I and Russ met thanks to Mr. Steve Ross. Steve asked me to participate in an artist lecture series that he was doing at the Metropolitan Opera, um, excuse me, Metropolitan Museum of Art. And he was doing a presentation on Alan J. Lerner. And Mr. Sirola was one of the other participants in that particular concert. And I changed my mind because I thought it was very cosmic, <laughs> for lack of a better word, that Shana did a song from My Fair Lady on that same program. I did a song from My Fair Lady. And Joe, of course, did a couple of songs from My Fair Lady. So I thought it would be apropos for me to sing the song that brought us together. <clears throat> I have often walked down this street before, but the pavement always stayed beneath my feet before. All at once am I several stories high, knowing I'm on the street where you live. Are there lilac trees in the heart of town? Can you hear a lark in any other part of town? Does enchantment pour out of every door? No, it's just on the street where you live. And all oh, the towering feeling, just to know somehow you are near the overpowering any second you may suddenly appear. People stop and stare, they don't bother me. For there's nowhere else on earth that I would rather be. Let the time go by. Thank you, Joe Sorolla. Ladies and gentlemen, Eric Rudy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please say hello to Mr. Steve Ross. Now I'm on. Okay, fine. I was trying to think of um, someone in the musical theater who, who resembles uh, Joe, my great pal Joe. But before I do that, uh, there is another side to the, the benefaction of this extraordinary gentleman. I play from time to time for a group of people, uh, uh, actually a wonderful lady, who runs a program for uh, people who are have dementia and uh, Alzheimer's and but uh, so but they're not 
in, in criminal cases. I mean, they, they have functions and they're brought to this place. And, and of course, we all know the power of music and it recreates and brings great pleasure to their eyes and, and to their minds and hearts. And every now and then when I play, Joe said, may I come and dance with the ladies? And he comes with his roses and his great bonhomie and makes everybody happy by dancing. I really appreciate that, Joe. And the ladies do, too. They don't think about it very often, or they don't remember you, but they love you anyway. <laughs> the character I was thinking of is a very, Joe was, I think, is looking of a Zorba character, a zesty and full of life man. But I didn't want to stop at Zorba. I wanted to move on and think of an even higher person. So let's go over to Jupiter. Jupiter, uh, as you know, the king of the gods, was featured in a Cole Porter musical called Out of This World. Jupiter uh, decided that he, wanted, he had fallen in love with a, a lady on Earth and took, decided to go down to Earth and, and uh, woo her. With him, he took his, and it's my new stage name, his Randy sidekick, Mercury. And they uh, philandered uh, with every available female, both divine and human. But after a while, Mercury gets back to heaven to the chorus girls, that is to say goddesses who have missed him, and addresses the following remarks. Oh, what a bevy of beauties. Oh, what a school of fish. Oh, what a cavy of cuties. Oh, what a dish delish. I've known but litters of minxes. All of them fun for a while, yet now, for the loss, what me thinks is, you've got them, you've got them beat a mile there. They couldn't compare to you, they couldn't compare to you. Although I've played many, many a maid, they couldn't compare to you. I've thoroughly pitched the woo from the heights of Valhalla to Kalamazoo. And though they all had a lot on the ball, they couldn't compare to you. Of ladies fair, I've loved more than my share. And strange but true, I hereby declare from tiptoe to hair, they could not compare to you. After playing the local sirens who resided in my environs, I decided to learn the art of Cupid's trickery. So the once I started fusing, even a kind of kick out of trips that could be. After that, I met Calypso, who was definitely a dipso. Then I fled to Big Brunhilde, she was German. Snitching Eve from Adam, I attended Call Me Madam, and shortly began to nestle Essel Merman. I admired the silken body of the chic Scheherazade. Then of Lady Godiva, I became the lord. Having staged an orgy for some friends of Lucretia Borgi, I ended up at the stork with Fanny Ward. Having had a party for Phoenicia's goddess Astarte, I raised a bit of hell with Penelope. Quieting all my urgings for several vestal virgins, while well, I put on a strip for Gypsy Rose Lee. Though I liked the Queen of Sheba, she was mentally an amoeba. As for Beatrice d'Este, she was a pest and far too chaste. To the passionate wife of Nero, my reaction was frankly zero. As for that sorceress known as Circe, she was so hot I hollered for mercy. There was Galatea and mean Medea and Sappho, one of the best. There was Nefertiti, a perfect sweetie, and gay Mae West. I was a hell of a fellow with Cinderella and Isabella of Spain. And I used to caress both Lola Montas and that damn Calamity Jane. When Twix Nell Gwynn and Anne Boleyn, I was forced to make my choice. I became so confused. I was even amused and abused by Peggy Joyce. There was Melisande, platinum blonde, how I loved to ruffle her locks. There was Bride Aurora and Pandora who let me open her. Oh, but they couldn't compare to you. No, no, couldn't compare to you. Although I've played many, many a maid, they couldn't compare to you. Of ladies fair, I've loved more than my share. And strange but true, I hereby declare from tiptoe to hair, from dressed up to bear, hep hep to square, could not, could not compare to you. Here's to you, Joe. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Mr. Steve Ross.
Up next, please help me welcome to the stage the lovely Jamie DeRoy. Oh interesting because I just handed John the music he's never seen it before <laughs> I'm wearing shoes they gave me on NBC I've never worn before they're way too high hi Errol how are you ah uh, yes yeah, so anyway it's just it's great to be here for Joe he uh, he did request this song because I don't know we live in New York and it's just a New York phenomenon <laughs> that one <laughs> If on your block a store has gone out of business, wait a week, there'll be Dwayne Reed. No, not some trendy new boutique or a deli. Very soon you'll see Dwayne Reed. This city has a desperate need for condoms and cosmetics, taco chips and paper towels and no brand diuretics. 24 hours. So maybe I'll meet you there. You'll find me left of the cookies and men's underwear at my Dwayne Reed. Tattooed and forever con Dwayne Reed. T-shirts with Pokemon Dwayne Reed. Everything's waiting for you. Plus cup of soup and a tweezer, it's a single stop. Dwayne Reed, Tiffany's is through for every out of town tourist now prefers to shop. Dwayne Reed, each aisle is very brightly lit to help reveal its glories. 20 brands of tampons, over nine depilatories. How can you choose? There's not one near your address. Just wait by dawn, there'll be Rite Aid, a new CVS, and a Dwayne Reed. Dwayne Reed, Cope is allure, and you're Dwayne Reed. Everything's waiting for you. I've known Joan a really long time, uh, possibly longer than many of you in this room. And uh, I met him when he was single, but then again, he's still single. <laughs> He'll always be single, even though he has the gorgeous Claire. And uh, I was warned about Joe. My mother tried to sit me on her knee and tell me till her face was blue. Go flirt with any color, race, or creed, my dear, but come home with a Jew. <laughs> and though I tried to heed my mother's words, it seems that more and more I find I'm hiding in the alleys in the shadows of St. Patrick's forever having Gentiles on my mind. The first guy that I dated nearly drove my poor dear mother to her death. He showed up on my doorstep with the pungent smell of white bread on his breath. He never heard a wholesale when she offered him chop liver, he declined. And although I wasn't raised to eat corned beef and mayonnaise too, I'm forever having Gentiles on my mind. I tried those singles weekends at the Concord, Mama told me they were safe. And though I kept her strictly kosher, I kept ending up with trafe. So mama, though, you've tried to make me see the light. In this respect, I'm blind. 
please don't hate me, you and daddy, but I love a man named Patty. I'm forever having Gentiles on my mind. Though my parents may destroy him, I am really into Goyam. And forever having Gentiles on my mind. <laughs> Jamie DeRoy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome to the stage Mr. Lee Pfeiffer. I don't sing, I don't dance, and I don't tell jokes. I really want to thank Bernie for putting me on after some of these acts. I feel like whoever followed the Beatles on the Sullivan Show. But it's funny that Bernie mentioned The Man From U.N.C.L.E. because that's my favorite show of all time, Bernie. And uh, it's actually through The Man From U.N.C.L.E. that I first met Joe Sirola, although I didn't know Joe Sirola at the time. Uh, I watched him try to kill Robert Vaughn and David McCallum in three different episodes. Then my other favorite show was Get Smart, where he played Harvey Satan in Satan Place episode, and Bronze Finger, the villain, where he tried to kill Don Adams. I didn't meet Sirola in the, fre in the flesh until 2005 when I joined the Players Club, and I published a magazine uh, about classic cinema, Cinema Retro, and he was right up my alley because he regaled me with all these great stories of Burton and all the wonderful people he worked with, Clint Eastwood, and he also told me the singular great achievement of his career. He's the only actor that spent time with Ava Gardner and managed not to have sex with her. <laughs> so it's a, it's a great achievement, Joe. Glad you're still bragging about it. But rather than drone on, I thought I'd, I'd tell you one little anecdote and let the pictures do the talking. Uh, the first really big impression I had of Joe Sirro is when I was 11 years old, 1968. I went to see Hang 'em High. Clint Eastwood was an up-and-coming actor. He just made the spaghetti westerns with uh, Sergio Leone, and this was his first American western on the big screen. And Joe Sirola has a role in that as part of a as a man who's part of a lynch mob, who mistakes Clint Eastwood for a thief and tries to uh, hang him. They don't succeed. He survives. He becomes a sheriff, and he goes tracking these guys down. And well, I'll let the the film clip speak for itself. But this will show you the real Joe Sirola, the Joe Sirola that I know. Can we roll that clip? Tell her me, Marsh. Your name's Reno, isn't it? Look, Marshal, I don't know what kind of town you're running here. This isn't my town. Well, I wouldn't know. See, I just rode in. I'm gonna wash down some trail dust. And... All right, Marshal, what do you say I done? remember me, do you? No. When you hang a man, you better look at him. Don't go for that gun, Reno. I need you alive.
And you know, what? one thing that still hasn't changed, the drinks are still on Joe Sorolla whenever you go out with him. But uh, you know, Joe, uh, you are a true Renaissance man, a man for all seasons, those of us who go to your party and drop in. We know, you know, this is all a big act, this rose and all this stuff. That's the way he sits around his apartment. <laughs> in fact, he said to the costume designer, don't give me anything. I'll just bring my own wardrobe. He wears that hat around the house. And I'd like to give you a good old present, Joe, that's appropriate. Now, we know that he lives like a Bond villain in that, you know, penthouse apartment. I used to go up there, he'd hand me a glass of wine. But who has an elevator that stops in their apartment? Is that cool or what? I mean, and uh, stick a Cuban cigar in my mouth. But I know it needs a little classing up, Joe. So I'm, Janet and I have a one-of-a-kind gift that will really make that apartment into something. Yes, it's the oh. Hang'em High pillow. <laughs> Now, the next time Claire shuts you out, you can cuddle up with this, okay? So having said that, we love you, Joe, and keep knocking him dead. Mr. Lee Pfeiffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one, K.T. Sullivan. John Weber. And this is Joe Sorolla's Rose Garden. I've been around. I've paid my dues. And though I've got a lot to lose, I take a chance and fall in love again. It, it hurts a lot. I've been there twice. But oh, it seems so very nice. I take a chance and fall in love again. There are times I'm happy, other times I'm blue, but I had only me to answer to. and fall in love with you. And this excellent song is written by Joe Sorolla. series Montefusco is out in California uh, and I, in that series with Joe was, was Kay Ballard who I had met shortly before that 
uh, in Oklahoma. She played at the, the Lincoln Plaza Dinner Theater, and I was one of the shindiggers. I was just uh, I was just uh, out of college, and then and then on my way to California, I stopped in Vegas, and, and there was Kay uh, at the Sands with Arthur Siegel was playing for her, and I was in the audience with my parents, and she saw me, and she said, "Oh, look, Arthur, it's Big Eyes from Oklahoma." <laughs> And then she said, you know, I'm doing a series out, I'm, I'm a, a pilot for a new series called The Monte Cuscos. And the producer's son is here tonight, Doug Denhoff. Where are you, where are you Doug? <laughs> Doug? Are you, where's Doug? Oh, there you are. Yeah, and so uh, she said, would you like to come and see a pilot, a live pilot? It's my first day in, in L.A., and I'm so exciting. And I, something that, that um, and, and you know, Jamie, uh, I wasn't, uh, Kay didn't warn me about Joe. <laughs> But something that Joe has in common with Kay Ballard, they are true show people. Don't you agree? Another opening, another show. In Philly, Boston, or Baltimore. A chance for stage folks to say, hello, Joe. Another job that you hope at last. Will make your future forget your past. Another pain where the ulcers grow. The costumes, the scenery, the makeup, the props, the audience that lifts you when you're down. The headaches, the heartaches, the backaches, the flops, the sheriff who escorts you out of town. The opening, when your heart beats like a drum. The closing, when the customers don't come. There's no business like show business, like no business I know. Everything about it is Everything the traffic will allow. Nowhere can you get that happy feeling when you are stealing that extra bow. There's no people like show people. They smile when they are low. Yesterday they told you you would not go far. That night you open and there you are. Next day on your dressing room, they've hung a star. Let's go on with the show. Four weeks you rehearse and rehearse. Three weeks and it couldn't be worse. One week will it ever be right? Then out of that hat, it's that big first night. The overture is about to start. You cross your fingers and hold your heart. It's curtain time and away we go. smile when they are low even with the turkey that you know will fold you may be stranded out in the cold still you wouldn't trade it for a sack of gold let's go on with our show let's go on with another opening just another opening of another show <laughs> Joe Sorella And there is only one, K.T. Sullivan. All righty. I'd like to bring up to the stage the chairman of my board, the lovely and talented Joanne Fershpen. Come on up, honey. You got to see what she's... It's almost like a fashion show every time she comes here. She's always... Sim is that beautiful or what? I'm not singing. <laughs> All right, and now it's time to bring up our honoree, Mr. Joe Sirola. Please come up. Go ahead. Oh, my God. Wait, wait. Don't say anything yet. Stand right where you are. Oh, doesn't he look lovely tonight? And the Sirola rose. Is that beautiful? So beautiful. Anyway, Joe, I have something to say to you, okay? 
Don't read it. Okay. On behalf of the entertainment industry and the showbiz community, not just in New York City, but around the world, please accept this beautiful award. There it is. She's holding it right there. Please accept this beautiful award in recognition of your talents, your impact on society, and your incredible generosity you've given over the years. You're a dear friend to all of us, and we will always think of you with admiration and appreciation. Joe, you're one of a few and a breed of angels on this earth who give without expecting anything in return, except for the pleasure of making others happy. On behalf of the entertainment industry and the showbiz community, please accept this gift in recognition of your significant contributions and the generosity you've shown all of us and all of, and, and all of the friends that are here today to support you. You will also receive a DVD with all the six cameras. Wow. Yeah, you'll receive a DVD and you'll get to the point where you'll hear me say, you'll hear me say, you also get a DVD. So let me know when you... <laughs> When you watch the DVD, <laughs> I want to thank Joe for all that you've done for all of us. I'd like to thank the staff here at the Metropolitan Room, Johnny over there. Please give Johnny a hand. <laughs> Who's done the lights and sound? Rachel on the camera. I want to thank all the performers and contributors to the show who've said some wonderful things. I want to thank all the alumni that are here. Alumni, alumni. You got Jim Gavin, Marianne. You got Kitty. You got a, uh, Joe. Thank you so much for being here. Most importantly, I want to thank all of you for showing your love and support this evening. And I'm going to ask Joe to do one last thing, okay? If you can do that run of commercials that you, <laughs> that you do for me. You call me up and you do it, and I just love it. Can you do it? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Wendy Spicy Chicken Sandwich. When you got to have one, you got to have one. <laughs> NyQuil for that sniffling, sneezing stuff he knows fever, so you can sleep medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Board said oven gold turkey, the best turkey ever. Compromise elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, we bring good things to life. <laughs> Club Med for that antidote to civilization. <laughs> Hertz, the number one way to rent a car. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. You made my night. Thank you, all of you. You're wonderful. Can Thank I say you. A couple of words. Yeah. I just wanted to say, Bernie and Joanne, you hold. I've, I've been in the business for close to 60 years. Met uh, thousands and thousands of people, but without question, the nicest people I've ever met in the business is Bernie and Joanne. Oh, yeah. The warmest and loving, most wonderful people, really, I've ever worked with. You're sensational. I want to thank everyone for the wonderful, wonderful things, the songs, the jokes, everything. And one guy is missing physically, Russ Weatherford, Eric's husband. But he's with us always, and he always will be. Russ. <laughs> oh, and I want to thank an angel without whom, literally, I wouldn't be here. Claire. Claire goes, uh, And two of my beautiful grandchildren, Ava and Pippi, would you stand up? You got a light? There they are. Gorgeous girl. Uh, again, Bernie and Joan, you guys are wonderful. Thank you. We love you Thank, you so much. Thanks, Thank you all for coming. Get home safe. Good night.